Good morning everyone. Good morning Dr. Nancy Gonzalez. So I am the first reporter of the MDGs group. So my task is to discuss the historical background of the MDGs, its purpose, achievements, importance, as well as the advantages and disadvantages of these Millennium Development Goals. So the North and the South. The North represent the rich countries and the South represent the poor countries. Recently, the term North and South divided was called Development Gap. So in order to close the gap among nations in the globe, the United Nations created, implemented the Millennium Development Goals. And that is what we're going to discuss today. But before that, please allow me to present to you my screen. Welcome to the world of Millennium Development Goals. So the eight goals. First, eradicate extreme poverty and hunger. Second, achieve universal primary education. Third, promote gender equality and empower women. Fourth, reduce child mortality. Fifth, Improve maternal health. Six, combat HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases. Seven, ensure environmental sustainability. And last, a global partnership for development. So those are the Millennium Development Goals. So first, let's talk about the MDG's historical background. So, MDG arose from one of the largest ever gathering of the world leaders in New York in September 2000, year of 2000. So, it was started on September 2000 during the United Nations Summit. Collectively, 189 countries adopted the United Nations Millennium Declaration which evolved into MDG or the MDGs. So, the Millennium Declaration was being adopted in that year and turned into the MDGs or the Eight Goals of the Millennium Development. The United Nations Millennium Declaration signed in September 2000. So, the Millennium Declaration that was being adopted and signed on the year 2000 is all about the committed world leaders to combat poverty, hunger, diseases, illiteracy, environmental degradation, and discrimination against women. So the MDGs were derived from this declaration. So the United Nations Millennium Declaration signed in September 2020. So the United Nations Millennium Development were eight goals that all 189 UN member states have agreed to try achieve by the year 2015. So the eight goals being adopted by the United Nations is needed to achieve by the year 2015. And it was their first goal. Next, its main goals to combat poverty, hunger, diseases, illiteracy, environmental degradation, discrimination against women. So the MDGs find their origins in development ideas and campaigns of the 1980s and the 1990s. They were officially established following the Millennium Summit of the United Nations in the year 2000. So now, what is United Nations? 
So, United Nation is an international organization founded in 1945 after the Second World War by 51 countries committed by maintaining international peace and security, developing friendly relations among nations, and promoting social progress, better living standards, and human rights. So, in addition to maintaining international peace and security, the United Nations protects human rights, delivers humanitarian aid, promotes sustainable development, and, and upholds international law. That's why United Nations is very important. So, MDGs were derived from this declaration and had specific targets and indicators that respond to the world's main development challenges. So, by the help of the United Nations, the MDG was being created to respond and address the world's main development, cha development challenges and problems. So, because of this summit, the MDGs arose and become useful in many people. So, later on, you will know why MDGs become useful in many people. Because my group mates will discuss it one by one. So next, let's go on to the purpose of the Millennium Development Goals. So first, in 2000, a group of experts and UN Secretariat selected 18 targets from September 2000 Millennium Declaration and grouped them into 8 goals. Their main objective is to reshape UN Development Agenda. So, from 18 Millennium Declaration, they select 8 goals to be achieved. So, their main purpose is to reshape, regulate the UN Development Agenda. Second purpose, their goals are ambitious agenda for reducing poverty and improving lives that, that world leaders agreed on the Millennium Summit in September 2000. So for each goal, one or more targets have been set most of 2015 using the 1990s as a benchmark. So it is ambitious in a sense that in every goal, they are, they are also created one or more targets based on the 1990s UN agenda. So and it is also a big challenge to all United Nations mem United Nations member to achieve the eight goals and its target by the year or by the end of 2015. So next purpose, to provide a framework for the whole international community to work together towards a common goal. If these goals are achieved, world poverty will be reduced by half. Millions of lives will be saved and billions of people will benefit from the global economy in a more sustainable environment. So in here, they need to provide a framework that would help all the international community to address problems so that every country could get its benefit from the eight goals being formulated by the UN. So next purpose, it aims to show how best to include the basic fundamental of life, access to land, shelter, food, power, and Right, so the MDGs are showing to the entire globe that it is the best to include the basic needs of the people, in including the power and rights. So next purpose, to process and build on local organizations' ability to address the priorities of the local people. So these M MDGs is not merely focuses on the global problems and priorities, but they are also after to those local organization problem. And last, it also implies a strengthening of the local capacity to assess changes using key indicators designed and monitored at local levels. So now, let's discuss about the MDGs or the Millennium Development Goals. So what is MDGs or the MDG? The Millennium Development Goals are the world's time-bound and quantified targets for addressing extreme poverty in its many dimensions. So first, income, poverty, hunger, disease, lack of adequate shelter, and exclusion while promoting gender equality, education, and environmental sustainability. 
so time bound because the eight goals is measured or restricted by the time in order to achieve by the given time duration. They are also basic human rights, the rights of each person on the planet to health, education, shelter, and security. So it is also talks about the human rights were protected by both municipal and international law. So the MDG, it is the international, the eight international development goals for the year 2015 that had been established following the Millennium Summit of the United Nations in the year 2000. So the MDGs, it is mainly the eight goals with its targets and indicators. So the Millennium Development Goals or the MDGs were a consequence of several processes including changes in development thinking, a series of thematic conferences held in 1990s, putting forward time-bound quantitative goals and the, and the urge of the international community to make a big push towards development in the new millennium. So it is the goal that prepares each country to its millennium development so that we will have the world that we really want, that no one is left behind. So these are the next, these are the Millennium Development Goals or the eight goals. First, eradicate extreme poverty and hunger. Second, achieve universal primary education. Third, promote gender equality and empower women. Fourth, reduce child mortality. Fifth, improve maternal health. Six, combat HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases. Seven, ensure environmental sustainability. And eight, develop a global partnership for development. So those are the eight goals and that will be discussed with my group mates later on. So Millennium Development Goals Achievement. So this MDG has an, an, an achievements. So first achievement, so more than 1 billion people have been lifted out of extreme poverty. So by the help of the MDGs or the Millennium Development Goal, people have been lifted out on poverty since 1990. Second, child mortality dropped by more than half since 1990. So the MDG helps the country to lessen child mortality. Third, the number of out-of-school children has dropped by more than half since 1990. So, this MDG helped the out-of-school children to enter a school where they can learn and achieve their dreams. So, next, achievements. HIV AIDS infectious fell by almost 40%. So, the MDG has a huge impact on this problem. So those are the achievements of the MDGs. So next, let's go on to the importance of the MDGs. So first, it represents the commitments of the United Nations member states. So it is the face of the dedicated people behind the achievements of the MDGs. Second, drive international development policy by spelling out the responsibilities of rich countries to support poor countries through aid, debt relief, and improved market access. So, the act of teamwork and cooperation was given importance by the MDGs. So, next, the goals confirmed that the importance of United Nations with its unique legitimacy and governing power as the multilateral body best place to build global coalitions and political actions to address global problems. So the think globally and act locally is being practiced by the UN member states to address the global issues and problems. Next, the MDG agenda has become a uniting and organizing principle for the work of the entire international system in the area of development. So. The MDG makes all the country united for the work of the entire international system development. So next, importance. 
So the MDGs also provide a rationale for the United Nations family to work together more coherently and effectively so as to give countries the support they need to achieve the goals. So unity of the United Nations family was being emphasized to achieve such goals. So now, let's go on to the advantages and disadvantages of the Millennium Development Goals. So first, let's talk about the advantages. So first, composite indicators present complex or multidimensional issues in one aggregate value that can be used to support decision making. So the MDGs has has its composite indicators or target to support the decision making for example so in this goal number two so achieve universal primary education so it has a target and its indicator so the 2.a is a target so first ensure that by 2015 children everywhere boys and girls alike will be able to complete a full course of primary schooling so the indicators 2.1 net enrollment ratio in primary education 2.2 proportion of pupils starting grade 1 who reach last grade for primary 2.3 literacy rate of 15 to 24 years old women and men so that is the example of the composite indicators so next advantage through providing aggregate information and country Country performance, composite indicators can be used to rank countries on complex issues. So the aggregate information helps to rank countries' performance as their basis for development or to address the problem easily. So next, the information provided by the composite indicators can be important in attracting pub public and stakeholder interest on the issue issues measure so the targets and its indicator is useful in attracting public interest on how the to mesh to measure the, the issues of their countries so next advantage composite indicator provide measures to assess a country's performance over time so useful in assessing country's performance over a period of Time. So, it is useful. The MDG are very useful. So, next. Composite indicators place priority issues of countries' performance and progress at the core of the policy arena. So, it helps the country to place the top priorities of the country's related issues to be addressed first. So, they facilitate engagement with the public and promote accountability. So, composite indicators provide easy information for the general public compared to identifying common trends or performance across the various indicators. So, by the help of the MDGs, country's engagement with the public and its accountability is being promoted. So, next, they allow comparison of complex dimensions by users. And last, Proponents of composite indicators believe that the indicators provide meaningful information in aggregate indicator that can be used for the policy advocacy for certain issues. So it helps the information becomes visible to compare rather than identifying trends across the different indicators. So, those composite indicators are referred to as components or component indicators. So, they believe that the indicator is helpful in policy making and advocacy. So, next, the disadvantages of the MDGs. First, if the construction of the composite indicator is flawed or the indicators are, are all misinterpreted, they give misleading policy messages to decision makers. So, if the so, if the composite indicator is damaged or imperfect, it gives misleading or ineffective policy that gives problem to the decision to the decision making. So, second, the construction process involves subjective judgment 
in a number of steps such as weights, feeling of missing values, etc. Third, some critics argue that the composite indicators are waste or hide a lot of work in data collection and editing in one single number. So they find that composite indicators in every target is not useful since it has so many hidden data collection. Next, composite indicators may be misused, for example, to support a desired policy if the construction process is not transparent and or lacks sound statistical or conceptual principles. And last, disadvantages of the MDGs is it may lead to a to an inappropriate policy policies if dimensions of the performance that are difficult to measure are being ignored. So those are the advantages and disadvantages of the MDGs. So, and that's end with my discussion. Thank you and keep safe, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mom Nancy Gonzalez. This is my report about Millennium Development Goals. So, the, third, the MDG has eight goals. The first one is to eradicate extreme poverty and hunger. So the MDG target of reducing by half extreme global poverty was achieved by 2010, five years before the 2015 deadline. MDG, goal, MDG 1 has three targets. First is to have the proportion of people whose daily income is less than $1.25 to achieve full and productive employment as well as decent work for all including young people and women to have the proportion of individuals suffering from hunger in the period between 1990 and 2015. So the target one is to extreme poverty reduction. The poverty rate in the developing world has plummeted from 47% to 14% in the period between 1990 and 2015, a 70% drop. So by 2011, all developing regions, with the exception of Sub-Saharan Africa, had achieved the target of having the number of people living in an extreme poverty. The most populous countries in the world, China and India, played a major role in the worldwide reduction of poverty. Target 2. Achieving full and productive employment. The global economy is in a new era characterized by slower growth, greater inequalities, and turbulence, plus employment opportunities are not growing as fast as the increasing labor force. Employment opportunities have diminished in both developed and developing regions. The employment to population ratio in developed nations has fallen by 1%, while that in developing regions has reduced by 1%, with the largest declines in Eastern and Southern Asia. So youth, especially young women, are still disproportionately affected by unemployment and few employment opportunities. Only 4 in 10 youth are employed in 2015, compared to 5 in 10 in 1991, indicating a 10% drop in employment. The number of employees living in extreme poverty has reduced significantly over the past 25 years. Despite the global financial crisis, in 1991, nearly 50% of workers in developing nations survived on a household income of less than $1.25 per person per day. So, our target number three. Current estimates suggest that nearly 780 million people living in the developing regions are undernourished which means that 1 in 9 people do not have enough to eat. However, this translated to a 50% drop in a proportion of undernourished people in, the, in developing countries, from 23.3 to 12.9% between 1990 and 1992 and 2014-2016. to 2016. So the MDG solutions improving agricultural productivity and incomes and promoting better nutritional practices at all levels and programs that enhance direct and immediate access to food by the NDS. Food and agriculture organizations helps developing countries to improve agriculture, forestry, and fisheries practices 
to sustainably manage the forest, fisheries, and natural resources and ensure good nutrition for all. The second goal is to achieve universal primary education. The target is to ensure that children universally, including both boys and girls, will be able to complete a full course of primary education by 2015. So here are some of the achievements of MDG2. An increase in the primary school net enrollment in the developing world from 83% in 2000 to 91% in 2015. Nearly 50% decrease in the number of out of school children or primary school age globally from 100 million in 2000 to around 57 million in 2015. Remarkably, in, remarkable improvement in primary education in Sub-Saharan Africa since the establishment of the MDGs. The net enrollment rate increased from 8% in the period between 1990 and 2000 to 20% in the period between 2000 and 2015. Global increase in the literacy rate among youth aged 15 to 24 from 83% in 1990 to 91% in 2015. Significant progress has been made in increasing primary education enrollment since 1990 especially since the adoption of the MDGs in 2000. Yet, there is still a few developing countries where children of primary education age do not attend school and those who begin do not complete it. The rate enrollment of 1990 and 2000 in the developing regions improved from 80% to 83% only, but the growth accelerated after 2000 reaching 90% in 2007. So enrollment progress installed at this point without any significant increase. So what are the barriers to enrollment? The first one is conflict. In nation affected by conflict, the number of out-of-school children increased from 30% to 36% between 1999 and 2012. This was mostly evident in Northern Africa and Southern Asia. The second one is the household wealth. A recent survey in 63 developing countries conducted between 2008 and 2012 revealed that the children in the poorest households were four times as likely to be out of school as those in the wealthiest countries. In other words, 21.9% of primary school age kids in the poorest quantile were out of school compared to 5.5% in the wealthiest quantile. Continue. So this ability is the third one. This is another impediment to access education, especially in India, where more than 33% of children aged 66 to 13 years with disabilities are out of school. This is despite the country's effort to make education more inclusive through efforts like teacher training, allocation of funding for school infrastructure, and the Right to Education Act. So the MDG um, come up to a solution that the Sub-Saharan Africa also showed progress towards MDG 2. School fees that include parent-teacher association and community contributions, textbook fees, compulsory uniforms, and other charges took up nearly a quarter of a poor family's income and led to countries to eliminate such fees increasing enrollment. Food and Agriculture Organization is the UN lead agency for education for rural people, a network of about 412 partners including governments, civil society, and the private sector. ERP fosters rural people's capacity to be food secure and to manage natural resources in a sustainable way through increased access to quality education and skills training for all rural children, youth, and adults. So three, promote gender equality and empower. It is important to promote the total equitable participation of both men and women in efforts aimed at improving poverty reduction. So the target is to eliminate gender disparity in primary and secondary education by 2005 and in all levels of education by 2015. Gender disparity has reduced dramatically at all levels of education in the developing region since 2000, hitting the MDG target. So in primary education, five of nine developing regions, Eastern Asia, Southeastern Asia, Southern Asia, the Caucasus, and the Central Asia, 
have and Latin America and the Caribbean have achieved parity with the most substantial progress being made in Southern Asia where it increased from 0.74 to 1.03 between 1990 and 2015. So in secondary education, as far as secondary education, gender parity has, achieved, has been achieved in 2015 in multiple developing regions, namely the Caucasus and Central Asia, Southeastern Asia, Eastern Asia, Southern Asia, and Northern Africa. So in tertiary education, the largest gender disparities in terms of enrollment ratios are found in tertiary education, since only one developing region, Western Asia, has achieved the target. The most extreme disparities are those at the expense of women in Southern Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, and at the expense of men in Northern Africa, Eastern Asia, and Latin America, and the Caribbean. So the labor market. Since 1990, the woman's share of wage employment has grown progressively. Though at a slow pace, the proportion of women in paid employment outside agriculture has grown from 35 to 41% between 1990 and 2015. So at the same time, the proportion of women in vulnerable employment either as a contributing family worker or own account worker has reduced from 59 to 46% as a share of a total female employment. So, some of the achievements of MDG3, an increase in the number of girls in school in 2015 compared to 2000. In Southern Asia, the number of girls enrolled in primary school was 74 for every 100 boys in 1990, I mean. By 2015, there were 100 girls enrolled for every 100 boys. So, the proportion of women in vulnerable to employment compared the total female employment has reduced by 13% in a period between 1991 and 2015 compared to a 9% decrease for men. Significant gains in women's parliamentary representation in nearly 90% of 174 countries for which data has been available in the past two decades. So, issues that need to be addressed in having the equality of gender. So, violence against girls and women. The second one is men's and women's and equal opportunities in the labor market. Third one is gender-based discrimination in law practice. The unequal division of unpaid care and domestic work. Women's limited control over property and assets. And women's unequal representation in public and private decision making. So, the solutions are... Builds technical capacity among members of countries to analyze rural gender issues and address them in policy and program development. Works to strengthen their agricultural and livelihood skills of rural women and men. Assist member countries to advance rural women's equal participation in decision making at all levels. Supports the formulation of gender sensitive national and regional agricultural policies links rural women and men through information and communication networks develops and shares good practices that contribute to the economic and social empowerment of rural women. So that would be all. Thank you. A pleasant day everyone to our professor, Dr. Nancy Gonzalez. My name is Valerie R. Ferrino, and I would like to welcome you all to our next topic under Millennium Development Goals. Okay, those are reduce child mortality, improve maternal health, and combat HIV or AIDS, malaria, and other diseases. So the global mobilization behind the Millennium Development Goals has produced the most successful anti-poverty movement in history. The landmark commitment entered into by world leaders in the year 2000 to spare no effort to free our fellow men, women, and children from the abject and dehumanizing conditions of extreme poverty was translated into an inspiring framework of eight goals and then into the wide-ranging practical steps that have enabled people across the world to improve their lives and their future prospects. The MDGs help to lift more than 1 billion people out of extreme poverty, to make inroads against hunger, to enable more girls to attend school than ever before, 
and to protect our planet. They generated new and innovative partnerships, galvanizing public opinion, and showed the immense value of setting ambitious goals by putting people and their immediate needs at the forefront. The MDGs reshaped decision making, decision making, and develop and developing countries alike. So, what? Okay, one of the eight goals of the Millennium Development is to reduce child mortality. Okay, so under nutrition estimated to be an underlying cause in more than one third of all deaths in children under five. Programs to improve household food security and nutrition information increase children's chances of growing to adulthood. Globally, the number of deaths of children under 5 years of age fell from 12.7 million in 1990 to 6.3 million in 2013. The first 28 days of life, the neonatal period, represent the most vulnerable time for a child's survival. In 2013, around 44% of under 5 deaths occurred during this period. Up from 37% in 1990. Okay, reaching the MDG on the reducing child mortality will require more rapid scale up of key effective, affordable interventions, care for newborns and their mothers, infant and young child feeding, vaccines, prevention and case management of pneumonia, diarrhea and sepsis, malaria control, and prevention and care of HIV or AIDS. Okay, so to deliver these interventions, the World, Organiza the World Health Organization promotes four main strategies. First, appropriate home care and timely treatment of complications for newborns. Next, intervention is to integrate management of childhood illness for all children under 5 years old. Another, expanded program on immunization. Then another intervention is infant and young child feeding. Okay, so the result of those intervention is The global under 5 mortality rate has declined by more than half, dropping from 90 to 43 deaths per 1,000 live, live births between 1990 and 2015. So despite population growth in the developing regions, the number of deaths of children under 5 has declined from 12.7 million in 1990 to 6 million in 2015, that is globally. So, since the early 1990s, the rate of reduction of under-5 mortality has more than tripled globally. So, measles vaccinations, vaccination helped prevent nearly 15.6 million deaths between 2000 and year 2013. The number of globally reported measles cases declined by 67% for the same period. So, about 84% of children worldwide receive at least one dose of measles containing vaccine in year 2013, up from 73% in 2000. Year or year 2000. Okay, so another goal of the Millennium Development is to improve maternal health. Okay, so hunger and malnutrition were observed to increase the incidence and fatality rate of the conditions that contribute to the nearly 80% of paternal deaths. So globally, an estimated 289,000 women died during pregnancy and childbirth in year, the year 2013, a decline of 45% from levels in 1990. So most of, the, most of them died because they had no access to skilled routine and emergency care. Since 1990, some countries in Asia and Northern Africa have more than half maternal mortality. Okay, so their intervention is our follow. Okay, strengthening first is strengthening the health systems 
and promoting interventions focusing on the policies and strategies that work, are proved for and cost effective. Okay, next is monitoring and evaluating the burden of maternal and newborn ill health and its impact on societies and their socio-economic development. Okay, now there is building effective partnerships in order to make best use of scarce resources and minimize duplication in efforts to improve maternal and newborn health. Another, advocating for investment in maternal and newborn health by highlighting the social and economic benefits and by emphasizing maternal mortality as human rights and equity issue. And lastly, coordinating research with wide-scale application that focuses on improving maternal health in pregnancy and during and after childbirth. Okay, so the result. Okay, so based on the graph, since 1990, since the year 1990, the maternal mortality ratio has declined by 45% worldwide, and most of the reduction has occurred since the year 2000. Okay, in Southern Asia, maternal mortality ratio declined by 64% between 1990 and 2013. And in Sub-Saharan Africa, it fell by 49%. So more than 71% of births were assisted by skilled health personnel globally in the year 2014 and increased from 59% in the year 1990. Okay, in Northern, in, uh, in Northern Africa, the proportion of pregnant women who received four or more antenatal visits increased from 50% to 89% between 1990 and the year 2014. Contraceptive prevalence among women aged from 15 to 49, married or in a union, increased from 55% in 1990 worldwide to 64% in the year 2015. Okay. okay, the next goal is to combat HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases. Okay, HIV, malaria, and other diseases directly and indirectly impact food and nutrition security, rural development, and agricultural productivity. At the same time, malnutrition and food nutrition insecurity can increase vulnerability to disease. At the end of 2013, 35 million people were living with HIV. That same year, some 2.1 million people became newly infected. Close to 12 million people in low- and middle-income countries were receiving antiretroviral therapy at the end of 2013. So, more than two-thirds of H new HIV infections are in Sub-Saharan Africa. At, as the world moves towards reaching the target day, day for the Millennium Development Goals, the World Health Organization is working with countries to implement the global health sector strategy on the HIV or AIDS for the year 2011 to 2015. The World Health Organization has identified six operational objectives for 2014 to 2015 to support countries most efficiently in moving toward, towards the global HIV targets. Okay, so Millennium Development Goal 6 has three targets. Okay, those are to halt by 2015 and have started to reverse the spread of HIV or AIDS. Another is to achieve a global, global access to treatment for HIV or AIDS for those who need it by 2010. And lastly, to have the cease and a started reversal of the incidence of malaria and the other major diseases by 2015. Okay, so the result. New HIV infections fell by approximately 40% between year 2000 and year 2013 from an estimated 3.5 million cases to 2.1 million. Okay, so over 6.2 million malaria deaths have been averted between 2000 and 2015 
primarily of children under 5 years of age in Sub-Saharan Africa, the global malaria incidence rate has fallen by an, by an estimated 37% and the mortality rate by 58%. Okay, so more than 900 million insecticide treated mosquito nets were delivered to malaria endemic countries in Sub-Saharan Africa of between 2004 and 2014. So between 2000, year 2000 and year 2013, tuberculosis prevention, diagnosis and treatment, interventions save an estimated 35 million lives. The tuberculosis mortality rate fell by 45% and the prevalence rate by 41% between the year of 1990 and 2013. Okay, as we reach the end of the Millennium Development Goals period, the world community has reason to celebrate. Thanks to concerted global, regional, national, and local efforts, the MDGs have saved the lives of billions and improved conditions for many more. The data analysis presented in this report proved that with targeted interventions, sound strategies, adequate resources, and political will, even the poorest countries can make dramatic and appreciated, appreciated progress. The report also acknowledges and even achievements and shortfalls in many areas. The work is not complete and it must continue in the new development era. Thanks for listening. God bless us all. What is Millennium Development Goal 7? MDG 7 is a broad goal with a mix of well-defined aims and more precise ones. Its four targets focus on sustainable development, environmental protection, access to safe drinking water and sanitation, and improving the lives of millions of people living in slums. The first target calls for the principle of sustainable development to be integrated into country policies and programs and for the reversal of the loss of environmental resources. The second aims for significant reduction in the rate of biodiversity loss by 2010. The third aims to minimize by 2015 the proportion of the population without sustainable access to safe drinking water and basic sanitation. The final target seeks the achievement by 2020 of a significant improvement in the lives of at least 100 million slum dwellers. Some of the problems resolved through the implementation of MDG 7. First, the virtual elimination of ozone depleting substances since 1990. Consequently, the ozone layer is expected to recover by around the middle of the century. Second, substantial increase in marine and terrestrial protected areas in many areas since 1990. In Caribbean and Latin America, Coverage of terrestrial protected areas increased from 8.8% in 1990 to 23.4% in 2014. Third, the number of people using improved drinking water sources has increased from 76% in 1990 to 91% in 2015. Fourth, 2.6 billion people have gained access to better drinking water since 1990. Of this, 1.9 billion have access to piped drinking water on premises, with 58% of the global population enjoying this level of service in 2015. Fifth, 147 nations in the world have fulfilled the drinking water target. 95 nations have achieved the sanitation target and 77 nations have met both. 
sixth, 2.1 billion people have gained access to improved sanitation. At the same time, the proportion of people practicing open defecation has reduced by nearly 50% since 1990. Seventh, a reduction in the proportion of urban population in developing nations living in slums from 39.4 to 29.7 percent in the period between 2000 and 2014. MDG8, a global partnership for development. Millennium Development Goal 8 has six targets that seek to develop global partnership for development. Namely, first, to further develop an open, predictable, rule-based, and non-discriminatory trading and economic system. Second, to address the special needs of the least developed countries. Third, to address the special needs of small island developing states and landlocked developing countries. Fourth, to deal exhaustively with the debt problems of developing nations. Fifth, to provide access to affordable essential drugs in the developing world in collaboration with pharmaceutical companies. Sixth, to avail benefits of new technologies, especially information and communications, in collaborations with the private sector. Some of the problems resolved through the implementation of MDG-8. First, a 66% increase in official development assistance from developed nations in real terms in the period of 2000 to 2014, reaching $135.2 billion. Second, in 2014, the United Kingdom, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Luxembourg continue to exceed the UN official development assistance target of 0.7% of gross national income. Third, imports from developing to developed countries admitted duty-free increased from 65% in 2000 to 79% in 2014. Fourth, the proportion of external debt service to export revenue in the developing world reduced from 12 to 3% between 2000 and 2013. Fifth, 95% of the global population is covered by mobile cellular signal as of 2015. Sixth, the number of mobile cellular subscription has grown by nearly tenfold in the last 15 years, from 738 million to over 7 billion between 2000 and 2015. Seventh, internet penetration has increased from about 6% of the global population to 43% between 2000 and 2015. Consequently, 3.2 billion people are now linked to an international network of content and applications. At the start of the century, all 189 United Nations member states unanimously agreed to forge a commitment via the Millennium Declaration to assist the poorest to achieve better living standards by the year 2015. In most developing countries, the MDGs have formed a critical element of government policy decisions for performance benchmarking. Although Africa as a whole has experienced remarkable change since the goals were set in 2000, Sub-Saharan Africa is claimed to be the region that has witnessed the least MDG progress compared to the other developing regions. What comes next? The MDG successor, the Sustainable Development Goals, are due to be adopted by the World 
leaders at a summit in New York in late September 2015. All countries as well aid agencies, businesses, and the public working in collaborative partnership will implement this universal agenda for a transformed world. And the first order of business will be reaching the farthest behind first. That is why the SDGs are designed to bring the world to several life-changing zeros, including zero poverty, hunger, AIDS, and discrimination against women and girls. Everyone is needed to reach these ambitious targets. The creativity, know-how, technology, and financial resources from all of society is necessary to achieve the SDGs in every context. In September 2015, the United Nations made history when 193 member states unanimously adopted 17 Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs that serve as the centerpiece of its post-2015 development agenda. The goals are No Poverty End poverty in all its forms everywhere Zero Hunger End hunger, achieve food security and improved nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. Good health and well-being. Ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Quality education. Ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Gender equality. Achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Clean water and sanitation. Ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Affordable and clean energy. Ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable and modern energy for all. Decent work and economic growth. Promote sustained, inclusive and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment and decent work for all. Industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization, and foster innovation. Reduced inequalities. Reduce income inequality within and among countries. Sustainable cities and communities. Make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Responsible consumption and production. Ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. Climate action. Take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts by regulating emissions and promoting developments in renewable energy. Life below water. Conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. Life on land. Protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, sustainably manage forests, combat desertification, and halt and reverse land degradation and halt biodiversity loss. Peace, justice, and strong institutions. Promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. Partnerships for the goals. Strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. Learn more about SDGC A by visiting www.sdgcafrica.com.